mental health. American poet Andrea Gibson said, when your heart is broken, you plant seeds in the cracks and you pray for rain. Heartbreak, especially romantic heartbreak, can be such an intense experience that it causes physical symptoms. It is only logical then that Devora would find healing in the physicality of EFT tapping. EFT, or Emotional Freedom Technique, was developed in 1995 by Gary Craig. It combines elements of exposure therapy, cognitive therapy, and acupressure. The research is growing in this multimodal approach to psychotherapy, and Devora has an experience to share after a particularly difficult breakup. I'm Talia Singer, and this is Whatever Works. Hi, Devora. How are you? Hey, Talia. I am great. Thanks for having me. So glad that you're able to join me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So it all started with, for me as a teenager, um, when I was just, um, yeah, when I was a teenager, I was very anxious and depressed. I had a really severe anxiety, really severe depression, some PTSD as well. Um, after an assault. And I tried, you know, what we would consider mainstream talk therapy Mm -hmm. um, and medication. And I was really blessed to have a great, like a great team. Mm -hmm. Really, like I look back at them and I appreciate them all deeply. You know, and my parents were supportive. I was so lucky in that way. Um, I was so fortunate, but it didn't, it didn't actually pull me out of the real like pit I was in. And it was severe enough that I was hospitalized multiple times when I was in 10th grade. So it was a, it was a rough few years. And I, yeah, it really was. And I remember that feeling. And Tali, I don't know if any of your listeners can relate to this, this feeling of you feel like you've checked the boxes of the of things that you do when you have this diagnosis. You know, people say, get yourself to therapy get a great psychiatrist, get meds. And, you know, you check, 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 did the thing, did the thing. Now what? Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember that feeling of like being a teenager and thinking, I've done all that. What else is out there? Am I going to feel like this forever? And I had this strange friend who, you know, his parents owned an anarchist bookstore. They grew marijuana in their backyard. Like this was that friend, you know? And he said to me, Devora, you have to come with me. I'm going to a workshop about tapping. 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 And I was like, is this tap dancing? Right. <laughs> like, what does this even mean? And he's like, no, it's called EFT, but you know, people call it tapping. Um, for sure, EFT tapping, and it's a way to relieve stress. It's based on Chinese acupuncture. And I'm thinking, this is nuts. Wow. You know, and this was 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, this was totally French. Renegade. Total renegade. And I remember <laughs> walking in and I don't know, Talia, should I tell you the experience of like actually going to that? Yes. It was so funny and bizarre. Like we walk in, we're teenagers, okay? So we're like 9, 18, 19, and um, we're the only teens in the room. And, and the only reason I agreed to go was because I had a crush on this guy. You know, I wasn't the kind of person who did fringe stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we walk in and we're the only teenagers and everybody is so friendly and they're all like middle-aged women in Birkenstocks and colorful scarves. This is the vibe, right? And it was actually, the workshop was given by Gary Craig, the founder of EFG. Mm -hmm. But basically you're tapping on different points. They're they're really acupuncture points, but you're using your own fingers to apply pressure to certain points. To yourself. Yeah, to yourself, on your own body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very empowering in that way. It's like you are doing it to you. And then, you know, he had us come with, you know, some event experience, something that was specific that we wanted to kind of see a shift Mm -hmm. in, you know, something we were very upset about, let's say, and wanted to have less stress or less anger or whatever around. And I remember clearly I came with, I just had a terrible breakup. It was just awful. I remember I just came in with a lot of rage and grief and whatever. And he, we sit around this circle and, you know, we start tapping. It's fascinating. And again, I'm happy to go into kind of how it works, but By the end of the process of us doing it several times, you know, I had no emotional charge around the whole breakup. 
Okay, then now you definitely have to tell me how it worked. You have to you have to describe what happened. How did you get from point A to point B? Right, and I and I remember telling you the the feeling of like I'm like clearly this is a placebo, you know, like obviously, and everyone else, but everyone else around was having the same the same effects, and I was thinking I'm crazy. Like they're crazy. Everyone in this room <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, here's how EFT tapping works. It's based on Chinese acupuncture. You're tapping with your fingers certain acupoints on your face and body. Um, and the belief is that it really impacts your amygdala, you know, where we have our fight or flight and our hippocampus where we're storing our memories, you know, so you'll have less just charge around the event. Walk me through it as an 18 or 19 year old, because I imagine that at 18 or 19, you weren't really aware of the amygdala or the PubMed studies or anything like that. You just kind of walked in with all of your fresh naivete into this right. kind of like hippie-ish environment. And someone comes up to you and says, what? Like, how does the session begin? Right. So he starts and he said, okay, you know, I hope you brought your thing to work on. I even checked at the beginning. I said, you know, I, can a breakup, is that even specific enough? Because the truth is a breakup has a lot of pieces, mm -hmm. you know? And he was honest with me. He said, honestly, if it were me, you know, choose like the last argument or choose like what you're most upset about the breakup. And then he said, okay. So he showed us kind of the points. He had a nice diagram. Um, it's not a lot of points. We're talking eight. Okay. Where on your person are you tapping? You start by this this area on your hand. It's called the setup point, and it's we call it the karate chop point. Basically, where you'd be karate chopping a board, if you can imagine, and that's where you first start tapping. And you do what's called the setup statement, and it identifies the issue and then adds a self acceptance phrase on the back of it. So, for example, what I tapped on is even though I'm really angry about this breakup, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. The ending statement is, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Mm. And if you struggle to say that, um, his, his joke was, don't worry, you can tap on that too, you know, like, but if you struggle, it could just be any kind of positive, like affirmative, like, I'm going to be okay. You know, some kind of just affirmative statement, but ideally a statement of self-acceptance. Um, and then you start the tapping sequence, which is just eight points. Um, and it's funny, as I'm talking to you, I'm going to do them myself so I can remember exactly where mm -hmm. it's so, I'm so fluent in them now that I have to like actually do it. Like, I'm used to like physically doing it. So top of your head is one side of your eyebrow, the other side of your eyebrow, under your eye, under your nose, under your mouth, under your collarbone, and then a little bit under your armpit. I'm doing it as you're speaking. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it's repeating it again and again. You're cycling through. And what I should have said, Talia, and I forgot, is that at the beginning, you're giving what we call like a suds, you know, like a, a, a unit of distress from one to 10. How stressed are you about this? Mm -hmm. And that's super important because at the end, you can see really how much it's shifted when you tune back in. So for me, I walked in and this breakup was like a 10. Like it was, was so all-encompassing for me at that time. Um, and then I left and it was maybe a one. Hi, this is Katie from the Jane team. Whether you're a solo practitioner or a clinic growing your team, we understand that every practitioner is unique. Jane is a practice management software that allows you to customize therapy notes, online booking settings, and personalize your clinic branding to match the way you work. And with Jane, you're not alone. That's why we offer multiple touch points along the way to ensure you're up and running as smoothly as possible. You can connect with us at jane.app forward slash mental health. So yeah, it was the whole experience was wild. It was wild. Um, with tapping, sometimes if you don't get the reduction right away in that particular issue, which I didn't for the first few rounds, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I tuned in and first you, you know, you're a little focused on learning the points. You're also a little focused on how stupid you look. <laughs> so there was both of those. But then when you finally get into like the, the tapping and ideally the verbalizing of, you know, what happened and, 
and you're tapping as you're kind of venting. So you could just say a statement that keeps reminding you. For example, for me, it would be like this breakup, this breakup, this breakup, and just keep repeating it and focusing on it while tapping the points. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have great success with my teen clients when they just want to vent and it's like an actual vent while they tap the points. Like, how could that jerk have done this to me? You know, mm-hmm. switch points. Like, how could he break up for me with me over text? That <gasps> idiot, you know, etc. Sometimes there's a lot of profanity that is fine. Mm-hmm. But so venting or again, just saying a phrase that's just a few words that keeps reminding you of the issue while you tap the points. And that's kind of how it works. You know, I I can't help but think I have an image, and tell me if this is weird. But do you have you ever seen the movie Goodwill Hunting? Yes, a long time ago though, but I have. And there's a very moving scene in the movie where Matt Damon, who's playing you know this very troubled youth, and uh, Robin Williams, who's his therapist, uh, says to him, uh, to his patient, he says, "It's not your fault," and. At first, the patient hears it and is a little bit awkward, and he's like, yeah, I know. And then the patient, and then the therapist repeats what he says. He says, it's not your fault. And the patient says, yeah, yeah, I know. And then the therapist repeats it again. He says, it's not your fault. And the patient starts to look uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the therapist says it again, it's not your fault. And he repeats it up until the point that the patient truly starts to think about it, Mm -hmm. be with it, and accept it. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that's kind of what this feels like. It's a very, it's a very moving moment in the film. And, and in some ways, I feel like there's like a reauthoring process that happens through the tapping experience, where at first you kind of like, feel it at a very surface level right like you said like it's weird it's awkward you feel like an idiot and Mm -hmm. you're tapping to say like I truly accept myself Mm -hmm. and the first few times you don't actually hear what you're saying right up until when you actually start to listen yeah absolutely that's exactly it you nailed it I love that you're kind of telling all parts of yourself you're like Telling yourself these affirmations on a cognitive level, you're telling yourself these affirmations on like an emotional level, which makes sense for EFT. And then it sounds like there's like even an element of spirituality about it where you just come to completely accept something about yourself. I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. And also, I think important that it doesn't have to be spiritual. You know, like we, I, there's some modalities that I use that really like they invoke a higher power and there's almost, there's a real like obvious spiritual aspect. And this is something that could be very, you know, for someone who's not into spirituality, it, it can also be just, you know, not mm-hmm. like it can absolutely go either way, which makes it, I think, very accessible to people. There's like a, a resurrection that happened in that group where you kind of raised the issue in the room and then you just kind of dealt with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, what was it like at the end of the session? How did you feel? Like you checked in with yourself. You're like, gee, it was a 10 and now it's a one. But what happens then? So I remember leaving and feeling completely bewildered. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just didn't even know what hit me. You know, and then I also felt hope, I think, for the first time in a long time, because it was like I I had my power back. You know, there was something so disempowering of always looking outside myself for answers, you know, constantly. But like at the end of the day, when you're having a breakdown at 3 a.m., what are you going to do to help yourself? Mm -hmm. What's going to be the 3 a.m. thing, you know, And, and how can we feel empowered to heal ourselves when we're when we're in distress? And that's what I felt here. I felt like, oh my gosh, I have a tool. So I started tapping on everything. Mm -hmm. You're like, I have this power. It's at my fingertips. Like, how do you even talk about it? Right. Like, let's not tell anyone because it's so bizarre. So if I'm really honest, like it wasn't fully the EFT tapping that alone that, um, you know, really healed the anxiety and the depression and PTSD. It was the tapping was super powerful. And then you know, it introduced me to some other modalities that also were super helpful. And with those kind of 
uh, in combination, you know, my I haven't had any symptoms of the anxiety, depression, or the PTSD in almost 20 years. Wow, that's truly remarkable. Yeah, it's great. And that's really why I do what I do. You know, I think, you know, definitely more traditional therapies are great for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I think we do people a real disservice when we act like that's the only option Mm -hmm. because it's never going to work for everybody. So this first experience was done in group. um, And you've also had experience with individual uh, one-on-one therapy with tapping. And do you find a difference when you're with a therapist, one person whose gaze is focused on you while you are tapping yourself versus being in a group setting? Definitely for anything really high intensity, you know, it's so nice to be one-on-one. I wouldn't have wanted to tap on a sexual assault in a group setting. Um, And that's what I did in, you know, my, the the, um, one-on-one work. You know, in a group, I mean, it's, it's a great way to learn. Um, and they've, they've studied what they call borrowing benefits, where it seems like actually when people tap together, um, they get really great results. But that being said, I think there's definitely great reasons to you know, see a therapist individually. And then it, in my view, the, the ultimate goal is that, you know, this is a tool you can take home with you. Um, so you become the person you're looking for. You know, like it's great to have a therapist and it's great to have somebody when we need support. But I think at the end of the day, we need to remember that we have our own inner wisdom and the more tools that we have that we can help ourselves with, the better. This has been the third episode in season three of Whatever Works. This episode was produced by me, Talia Singer, and edited by David Conroy and Jason Ball.